Forest Hills, an upper middle class enclave in the heart of Queens, New York, where more than 70,000 people live within two square miles. The neighborhood streets are busy, but PJ's restaurant is empty. That's me, that's me. Prior to opening the restaurant, Joe and Madeline were living a dream life. <laughs> when I first came to the States, I started working in construction, worked with my brother, PJ. PJ and I were very, very close. He really, truly taught me about life and be my own man. I lost my home for 20 years, worked as hard as I could to get my wife and kids, nice things, a nice house. We were going places. And then PJ passed away. Joe was a shell. Joe was just empty. I can't mention his name without feeling that hurt inside, you know? He didn't really know how to walk without that guy being around. He just meant everything to him. I just couldn't stand to see him in pain. And when this place came for rent, I said, go and get the key, and we'll, we'll just name it after PJ. Welcome to PJ. Which is even more special, because this was the bar that PJ owned. How you guys doing? You know what I know about running a high-end steakhouse? Apparently not much. I don't know why we're putting garlic on honey mustard. Joe, it's, it's a honey mustard garlic roasted salmon. That's what it's supposed to be on the menu. Really? Joe and Madeline are from a construction background, so they didn't really know what it was like to get into the restaurant industry. My steak just because it's flavorless. Red meat is red meat. I don't know what you would expect myself to do about that. It's a big problem, and the food's inconsistent. I'm a very good chef. People come here just for me. How's everything? That's terrible. I'm sorry. They love my food, and, and everything is great. It was raw. They didn't like the steak. Now I have to avoid two checks. I want this place to work so bad, but we don't know what we're doing wrong. Give me a cigarette right now. Give me a cigarette. I sunk almost $2 million in this restaurant. I see it dying in his shoes right now. The two insurances have to get paid this week. This restaurant, it's cost us it's our savings, our house, our cars, everything. 4000 that was so much money. That's it, I'm going to drink it. Come here. Go and drink it, you've been doing that all day. Joe sits and drink glasses of wine and watch television when there is a million things going wrong here. And he's just basically feeling sorry if the problems aren't addressed. We'll have no choice. We'll have to close the door. PJ Steakhouse. It looks great from the outside. There must be trouble on the inside. Wow. This is beautiful. Unbelievable. Wow. Anybody here? My goodness me. No one at the front desk. <sighs> Hello? So, a customer or? Mr. Ramsey, no, I'm the owner. You're the owner? Ah, huh? right. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Pleasure to see you. Um, good to see you too. Didn't expect to see you uh, at the bar. You've got no one at the front desk there. I see that, yeah. As soon as Chef Ramsey showed up, panic set in, and I started getting the butterflies. We're pretty slow this time of day, so. Slow. Is that normal? It is normal for lunch, yeah. Right. Hello. It's my wife, Milo. Hi, how are you? How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Me too. Oh, Eric. Eric, good to see you. Good to see you. I'm not intimidated by Gordon. We're here to get a job done, and we better do the job the best we can. And if he can help us, great. If he can't, then he will fuck himself. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm happy to be here. Um, somewhat, uh, yeah, taken back by walking in and having seen how beautiful this place is. What's wrong with it? I'm not uh, restaurant material, I found out. Uh -huh. I'm a contractor who uh, jumped into this, who thought I'd get great managers, good floor people, I'd sit back and have a couple of wines at the bar. And I wish opening restaurants were that easy, Joe. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh. You know, I'm learning as I go. It can put you in a hole real fast, a restaurant. I don't know where to go, you know? Okay. Well, I've just arrived. Yeah, I'm starving. I'm going to have some lunch, and then we'll talk after, you. Yeah? yeah, I want to cook him a great meal. And I'm going to let them find other problems in the restaurant besides mine, because I don't think mine's a problem. Oh, dear. Thank you. OK, you're welcome. So, steakhouse. Oh, dear. No porterhouse, no New York, no rump. There's only two cuts of steak. Two steaks on the menu in a steakhouse. It should be minimum eight to ten. 
How are you? Welcome to PJ's. My name is Colin. Farrell, thank you. How are you? Doing great. Thank you for Good joining us. So I'll start with crab cakes, then maybe the shrimp and roasted garlic ravioli, and then I'll have the filet mignon with the uh, gorgonzola demi glace. All right, I'll go put this in for you. Thank you, Colin. No problem. I know Eric's a good chef, so what's to be nervous about? What do you order? Crab cakes plus filet mignon with gorgonzola medium rare and a shrimp ravioli. Right down. I just love what I do. This is perfect. My food is good, and if he critiques it like I've seen him critique other people's food, I'm going to probably throw it at him. <laughs> what is that? The crab cake. Mango Somebody spit on my plate? What is that on there? That's coolie mango sauce. Oh, coolie mango. Thank you. Is that something out of the modern art museum? Splat. OK. Wow. That's fucking disgusting. He's rancid. Plastic bits of crap running through the crab cakes. Is everything OK? Uh, yeah, the chef sent out a little surprise. I've got bits of plastic running through there. See the plastic? I don't know where it came from, but it's definitely in there. But I I'm done with that. Thanks. OK. Severe warning for what's to come. Eric, you found a piece of plastic in there. Where's that from? I don't know, man. Fuck him. I have no idea where that plastic came from. Just happened to appear. I don't even have a place to get my kids out. The owner sat at the bar watching television, and they wondering why they're not doing well. Hi. Is that Joe's seat there at the end? Yes. All the time. He'll sit there most of the night. Oh, dear. Joe does need to get off his ass and start paying attention. Oh, here's my food. Fantastic. Let me, let me leave you alone to eat, right? Madeline, thank you. Lovely. Thank you. So. Oof. How'd you like the steak? Um, quite tough. Are they always served with raw onions, or? Yeah. Nah. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, you said the beef's a little tough. Just fucking get out of here. There's nothing positive being said. I don't really suck that bad, you know? Go oh dear. That looks like the biggest pile of shit ever to be served in Queens. My god. The raviolis are disgusting. Tart, tannin, and just a mouthful of acidic, thick, rich, creamy sauce that tastes like there's a buzz in your mouth. It just seemed like Chef Ramsay didn't like anything. Excuse me. Oh, God. Oh, dear. This is really bad. I can really start to understand to why Queens is running as fast as it can from PJ's. Disgusted by the food in this beautiful restaurant, Chef Ramsay heads to the problem area, the kitchen. Did you cook everything? Yeah. That was pretty fucking embarrassing. 100% pissed me off that Chef Ramsay didn't enjoy my meal. What's with the coolie? Is that something out of the Modern Art Museum? Splat. Where's that from? From a can. From a can. Disgusting. The steak fillet should melt in your mouth, and it did nothing of the sort. That's what we could afford. Eric, come around so I can talk to you properly. I was shocked. I really thought that Eric's food was a lot better than what Chef Ramsay said it was. The food was shit. I get a lot of compliments, man. A lot. A lot of compliments from where? The place is fucking empty. Who's running the place? For the most part, I am. Oh, please. First of all, I'm here every day. You're not here every day. I'm not here enough to mother him, but I am here. He should be here, but he's not doing it. If you're here really overseeing everything, then these problems aren't going to be here. So get your ass off the bar stool and stand in here and do it every single night. Can you motivate yourself to want to keep the restaurant open? I don't know. But he's given up. I see that myself here. Yeah. I've given up. Guys, I'm fucking sorry, but take one good look at yourselves first. If there's one thing that has to change, it's people's attitude around here. Whether you like it or not, you are restaurateurs. You have the fucking responsibility of making this place work. Yep. But there's too many people turning their back on things that are wrong. I've got to get some fresh air. What a shame. We have absolutely no idea what we're doing here. Just a big disaster. Are we opening for dinner? After a miserable lunch, 
Gordon takes time to sit down with the one person who appears to have not given up, Joe's wife, Madeline. The word PJ, where does that come from? Joe's brother. Joe's brother. Joe's brother owned an Irish bar restaurant here 10 years ago, and he died when it was at its peak. He died? How close were they? They were best friend, and he was very sad. He was empty. Right. I was worried for his welfare. I was worried. And when this place came for rent, he came home and told me about it. So I told him, you know, get the key, and we'll put his brother's name back over the door. And he spent all the money, but uh, it helped him. It's getting to him now, just the money. And, and I think that's why he's at that bar having drinks, because he's looking around. He is embarrassed at how this turned out. And how much did he spend? 1.2 million to build it. What does it need to take per week to break even? About 17 to 18,000. What's it currently running at now? Four. Four thousand. Four thousand dollars. Oh my God. Jesus. Uh, take me back. Joe was very successful before he opened the yes. restaurant. Yeah. In construction. Yes. And and where were you living at the time when it was? When successful? we were successful. Yeah. I designed a house. It was incredible. So you designed your dream house. Yes. But we sold it. You sold the house to keep the business open. Yes. We got rid of everything to stay here. But this restaurant did more for me than my house. It, it brought my husband back. How do you, how do you walk away from that? I, well, I can't. This is unbelievable. Well, that's helped me to understand uh, the background. As much as it has cost us to, to keep this place opened, at the same time, it gave us back Joe. And we just can't let it go. We'll do whatever we have to do to keep this place going. After his chat with Madeline, Gordon has a better understanding of what PJ means to this family. Now he wants to learn more about how the business operates, and there's no better way to do that than watching a dinner service. Hi, good evening. Welcome to PJ's. Thank you. Can I take your coat? Oh, I'm actually real comfortable. You have to leave it here. Okay, can I take these two? As is the case with many of the restaurants that Chef Ramsay visits, the word has spread in the community, and PJ's is much busier than normal. Hmm. I'm not used to being the hostess. How would you like that cooked? How well, please. Well done. Ordering a salmon. Well. I just know what's good, and I know what's bad, and I know I can handle the job, I know I can do the job really well, because my food is good. How are the stuffed mushrooms coming? Talk to me for two seconds. He literally doesn't talk behind the line. He doesn't communicate with me, especially when it's busy. The worst situation in the fucking world. Harry, yes, sir. I've got to talk to them. Come on. At least talk. Cool. Right. What table is this? That's a fuck up, Warren. Eric's lack of communication has the staff waiting for direction and the diners waiting for food. Casper normally wait this long for entrees. Yes. Yeah. It usually takes two hours to eat here. From two hours. Two hours from start to finish. Oh. Eric, they're starting to complain now that there's no food out there. <laughs> Come on, you can do better than this, can't you? You give a shit? Yeah, I give a shit. Come on then, big man. This is a steakhouse, yes? PJ Steakhouse. PJ Steakhouse. Yeah. Pathetic joke. That's what it stands for. Come on, guys. Nobody looks too happy here. I know we haven't got our meals yet. Here we come. Didn't get your dinner yet? No. Okay. For the amount of people we had tonight, it was a ridiculous amount of time they had to wait for the food. That's it. I'm going to drink it. Eric, how long on that 16? Putting it up right now. An hour into dinner service, food is finally leaving the kitchen. Because of the amount of customers, everyone is delivering the food. Even Madeline, Gorgonzola. who is clearly not comfortable with the job. All right. Uh, you have this bit of listen. <laughs> uh, let's go over this, OK? Not a waitress, not a hostess. I only own it. So I know nothing about the food. I am probably the only person who owns a restaurant in the world who wouldn't know what good food is. That's the truth. I, I left that part up to Joe from the beginning. Give me a glass of shiraz. 
It's an hour and a half into dinner service. Table 30, all the apps are in the window. Many customers have received food. This is like really weird. But for most, it wasn't worth the wait. It's really gross. You don't like it? Lemonade. Lemonade. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so I'll tell the chef about the chicken. Can you take this off the table, Freddy? Why? You can tell if she didn't like it at all. And what do you want me to do with it? You know what I'm saying? Can we take it off? I'll have a word with them. I went to check the menu. It's chicken Madeira, and I will have them take it off for you. Well, you didn't even recognize it? <laughs> okay. Oh, Thank you. Don't want to make Thank you. I just don't know how to have better manners at the table. How long on 23? Salmon and the filet. That salmon's fucked. Come on, guys. Eric, touch the top of that salmon. It's like a bullet. Yeah, it's too over that. It's only going to come back. Chef Ramsay is standing there and catching the mistakes as they're happening. Look at the crap underneath there. Look at that. Eric, that's well done. Everything just feels like it's turning downward. Touch that there. Yeah, that's not medium. It's a disaster. It was horrible to watch it just fall apart. Come on! No, I can't. It's too much for me. Fucking hell. With a restaurant full of unhappy customers... The chicken is chewing. ...and a kitchen falling apart... Look at that. Harry, that's well done. Chef Ramsay has seen enough of the dinner service and heads to the storage area to see what problems lie below. What's that in there? Stuck to the cardboard box. No one gives a shit about. Look. Oh. Oh my god. Look at that. Ah. Oh. What is that? No. No. Oh. That just sums up the whole restaurant. Fading away, rotten, and just one big fucking embarrassment. Ah. Chef Ramsay knows that tonight's dinner service was not lost on Joe and Madeline. Thank you. But he wants to make sure they have a complete picture of the state of the restaurant. Ay, ay, ay. This is so hard, you know that. I've just come to the conclusion that no one gives a fuck. Stay there. When Chef Ramsay walked in that box, I was terrified. This is the big kick in the bollocks. Oh. I'm not here for this. We're using horrible plastic lemon juice in a sauce that a customer complained about, the fact that it tasted of lemon. We've got fresh lemons downstairs that have gone rotten. I just can't believe it. If it was me, I'd be down with a, with a, with a toothbrush. Here's the killer blow for me, just that one there. Dealing with the restaurant and the food and the customers, one thing. But where the fuck do you start with that? It was beyond bad. It's such a lack of pride. It's such a lack of caring. Who knows what the fuck goes on behind our back? I don't know. It is your job to go in that walk-in box and rotate your stock and clean it out. And it's part of our job to make sure he does it. Why should I have to fucking worry about this shit? Is it your business? You can't stand there and be silent anymore, eh? You can't do that. It seems like the whole blame of this whole place is coming down on my shoulders, and it's not all my fault. I'm not the fucking problem here. We're slopping it out, guys. Just get a bag and, and throw it out. I can't believe that shit, can you? How in the name of God? Imagine the waste of food. We're worse to blame, Joe. I had no idea what was in there. I'm very disappointed with Eric. I realized tonight that a lot of the problems in the kitchen is Eric. Definitely a change has to come. The bottom line is nobody around here wants to work. Nobody. Undeterred by a rough day one, Chef Ramsay hits the streets of Forest Hills, armed with a camcorder 
to do some grassroots research on what people really think of PJ's Steakhouse. Yeah, have we got two seconds? Sure. PJ's the Steakhouse. Have you heard of it? Have you been there? I have. It was not a pleasant experience. When was the last visit to PJ's? Six months ago, I boycotted it. Have you heard of PJ's? Yes. Describe the dinner. Slow, cold, not too good, wouldn't go back. This is incredible. Thank, Thank you. you so much. After hearing what the neighborhood had to say, Chef Ramsay calls the owners and staff to a local theater. Take a seat. We're in this movie theater, and we have absolutely no idea what we're doing there. This is a serious world premiere, and the movie's entitled PJ's, The Word on the Street. Oh, gosh. I don't have a good feeling about this. I'm scared to see what's going to happen. Lights, please. Have you ever been to PJ's? PJ's? I've been there quite often, actually. When was the last visit to PJ's? Six months ago, I boycotted it. They never cooked the steak right. This is incredible. The same shit went on six months ago that I saw last night. How was dinner? Atrocious. Really? That My bad? My son's steak was a hockey puck. I actually recognized two of the customers that was on that tape, and I said, holy shit. I ordered salmon. I got flounder. That's ridiculous. How many people have you told in the last six months not to go there? There's 66 apartments in my building. And you told them all not to go? Yes. It's total bullshit. I wanted to turn around and smack Eric in the mouth. That's how, that's how angry he was. He's behind us, munching on popcorn, but he's grinning his face. What was the food like? Awful. Really? Everything was pretty horrible. Pretty horrible? Yeah, steak chewy, not too flavorful. If you had the chance to change, what would it be? Better food. Better food. That is from the people on the street, and these people are going to keep that place open. My God. I was disgusted with the little movie thing we just saw. I don't believe it's all that true, you know? It's not that bad. Why do you find it funny? We're sat here in an embarrassing situation. It's definitely nothing to laugh about, Eric. I don't know. I don't, I don't believe all of it. It infuriates me. If the food was good, the save was excellent. We have got to start turning this around. Can this restaurant survive with Eric run the kitchen? Devastated but informed by what they heard at the theater, the owners have a clear picture of how PJ's was perceived by the town. But Chef Ramsay has more. Um, there's one big issue. Eric, there's nothing worse than having a chef in the kitchen trying to produce mediocre food. I'm telling you, the engine room is fucked. And if that's not working, nothing's going to work. This business cannot go any further forward with a liability like that. It's just gone to a stage where he should have been gone a long time ago. You realize you're both at fault. Absolutely. Because you're accepting and tolerating yes. the incompetence. And he's taking advantage of your weakness by yes. becoming worse at what he's paid to do. I would like to give him a last chance tonight. I'm going to put him on the spot. I'm going to call it as I say it. Get a grip. Cook your ass off. Or game over for me. Yeah, sounds great. Tonight will be Eric's last chance to save his job. So Chef Ramsay has made a few menu changes to help the kitchen keep up. OK, tonight, we have to start building a reputation up. So we're going to offer a mixed grill. We've got the amazing thighs of chicken, steak, beautifully done on the broiler, a little mini slider, tomato, roasted, lamb sausage, sautéed mushrooms, fries and onion rings. Introducing a mixed grill to say thank you to the neighborhood and welcome back and, and give us a shot. Such a brilliant idea. That is our special this evening. I know not one steakhouse this evening anywhere in Queens is serving a beautiful mixed grill. I love it. You don't get that anywhere. That's great. Eric, anything on there you can't do? I can do it all. You can do it all? OK, I need Eric, Madeline, and Joe two seconds, please, yes? This is what I do. Let me do what I do. OK. Eric, one thing I need to see is the timing. The timing has to be absolutely spot on. Tonight's your night. You have to show me that. You have to fucking show me. It's time for Eric to step up to the plate tonight, or there's no room for him here. OK, you're the owners. Who's running it tonight? I am. What are you doing tonight? Salads. Salads. I don't want to see you anywhere near the fucking bar. Run it. Run it, run it, run it. OK? Let's go. <laughs> Hey, how are you? Good evening. Welcome to PJ's. Table four? Yeah. yeah. Follow me. We have our grill for two tonight. Have fun, please. Smile a lot. Smile. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy. 
called our PJ's Mixed Grill. It has a flank steak on it. It has lamb sausage. Comes with grilled chicken. With that's your flank steak right there. Would you like to start out with one of those? Yeah. So what can I get you tonight? Mixed Grill. Mixed Grill special. Thank you. Thanks. This is unbelievable. Already there's a renewed energy going on, and this mixed grill has got them sort of excited, but I know it's early days. However, the big pressure is on Eric and Madeline. She has to run a business, and he has to be consistent in the kitchen. Otherwise, it's fucking history. A strip, a half rack, two fillet. You got a tomato and much salad, Joe. We got a rock tonight. You ready, bro? It's nice to see my husband off the bar stool, on his feet, and back to work. You just have an order? Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Excellent. Eric, when we start to send the mixed grill, what I want to do is see half the table in the window without the other half coming at the same time. Yes, Chef. Excellent, thank you. It makes me feel confident when I can hear a chef's voice behind me. You know that? Yes, Chef. Joe, I'm ready for that tomato mozzarella. Tomato mozzarella. Steak medium. Slider. Just That's lettuce it. and tomato. I need to pick up over here at PJ's Mixed Grill. With Joe and Eric working together, Food is leaving the kitchen at a good pace. Here we are. And now, the first mixed grill special is hitting the table. When the first mixed grill started to go out, you know, you could see people in the dining room looking over and getting excited. How's everything look? It's really cold. Everything's cold? This is cold and this is cold. All right, I'm sorry about that. That steak is so great. I'll be right back. I'm fucking believable. Mushrooms are cold, sausage is cold. It's That's supposed it? to be medium. Oh, come on. Eric, it's the first one. It's the first fucking table. Come on, Eric, please, yeah? Don't let me down, yes? Pick up on that PJ's Mixed Grill. Ordering a salmon. We got a PJ's Mixed Grill. We got a calamari first. The Mixed Grill special is extremely popular, with 21 orders already taken. I need to pick up over here at table 12. The kitchen has pushed out 14 of them in a hurry. Thank you. Now it's time to find out if Chef Ramsay's dish, cooked by Eric, is satisfying the customers. How is everything? I mean, that's terrible. I'm sorry. It's freezing cold. And it was raw. There's some pinkishness in the chicken. I will be right back, OK? Is everything OK? It's ice cold and All right, I'm, I'm very sorry. sorry about that. I'll take it right back. Can you change that for, like, the filet uh, or something? He doesn't like it. Okay. It's just dry. I'll be right back. What's wrong with it? It needs to be. He said it's cold. Oh, oh come on. Madeline, does that chicken look pink to you? Yeah, very. Just watch it one time, Madeline. Everything's coming back. Uh, I'm so fucking lost, man. He hates it. Oh, come on. This is getting worse than last night. Eric couldn't cook a sausage. It, it was sad. What's going on here, guys? There's one simple fucking dish on there to make things look somewhat easier. Yeah, real fucking simple. Come there. I've never, ever, ever, ever seen it this bad. I don't care anymore. Let's stop the madness. Stop it. Close the fucking door. Close the fucking door. It's an hour into dinner service, and with food coming back at a ridiculous rate... He hates it. Oh, come on. ...and Eric completely giving up... I don't care anymore. Chef Ramsay knows he is left with just one choice. Let's stop the madness. Stop it. Close the fucking door. Close the fucking door. Close the fucking door. It was his last shot, and he didn't perform. It's a serious problem. No lie, our chef walked out. They're shutting down the kitchen. After shutting down dinner service, Chef Ramsay calls an emergency meeting with the owners. You cannot continue like this. I'm trying my best. And I cannot work with no tools in there. He's a cook, but he's not a chef. There's a lot of money invested here. And if I have to choose between a future and a chef, I have to choose the business. He needs to go. We need. A new kitchen leader. It was a no-brainer. Please give me a real chef. I am willing to bring a chef in here and pay personally for that chef to help turn this business around for the first month. But that's your decision. You can't ask for more than that. You're the owners, and it's your call. See you in the morning. We had to make a quick decision. We couldn't let her linger on. We had to rip the band-aid off, you know? Come outside. At this point in time, if I don't do something, it's not going to be here at all. I can't lose a million dollars. You know what? I think it's all fucking bullshit. We should go whatever direction we have to go in. We should have to. That's all I can tell you. Do what you gotta do. We 
gotta move on, my friend. If my shit's not good enough, let him find somebody else, because I'm fucking done with it. It's time for a 360, you know? Getting rid of Eric, it was tough. But what's best for the restaurant is the way I'm gonna go. He's not the only thing that has to change here. He definitely is not the only thing. I need to get back on my feet and start paying attention to the business. And Joe does also. It's got to be becoming about keeping this place open and money. Joe and I need to keep this place going. Give it a golden opportunity. With Chef Eric now out of the picture, Chef Ramsay is ready to present his plan for the new PJs. How are we feeling? Great. It's been a tough week, yes? Time to put all that aside. This is not just a new chapter. This is a new book. Are you ready? Yes? The steakhouse has closed. PJ's Grill is now open. Look <laughs> at that. <laughs> That's beautiful. Inviting, sumptuous, rich, is clear. PJ's Grill. I think it's a wonderful idea. I think it's perfect for the neighborhood. Right, should we go inside? Yeah. Yes? Let's go. The important part of keeping PJs, absolutely <gasps> crucial. Oh, my God, Joe. This area here is dedicated to him. Now it has a proper meaning. And more importantly, what a lovely tribute. It's beautiful. It brought a tear to my eye, you know? It's a good reminder of why this place is called PJ's. I feel PJ's presence here today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Madeline, Joe, two seconds. Want to introduce you to your new chef. This is Mark, Mark Hi. Elliott, Madeline, the owner. Lovely to meet you. And Mark. Joe, the owner. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, we're excited Good. to Mark have you. Likewise, Mark. I'm just so excited. I just can't wait to taste his food. I just can't wait to see the reaction of the customers. He knows his food inside out, and he knows how to cook. Let me tell you that. <laughs> yeah, it's a long story I'll explain later. <laughs> just having someone new and professional with ideas in this restaurant, it'll motivate and turn things around. With Joe and Madeline embracing Chef Ramsay's plan, right. he now introduces the new menu for PJ's Grill. Time for some dramatic change with the food. I'm excited about this part. This is the bit that really gets me fired up. Quick run through the menu, yes? Small, fresh, casual, and more importantly, fast. Irish stew, chicken scallopini, classic, OK? Steak Fred, we're a grill. So we've got the most amazing grill, the most amazing steak Fred. OK, happy? Good. Madeline, I need two seconds with you, please. Sure. Yeah? Come with me, my darling. Good. Excellent. There's one last change. What I need to see from you tonight, more than anything, is just walk with the customers. I want the burden off your shoulders tonight. And the only way around that, OK, was to bring in someone very special. And he's someone I trust with my restaurant. This man handles 250 staff a day. And he's here tonight to help you. Hello, Aaron. Hi, Tom Hi, Morning. Nice to meet you. How are you? Good. How are you, sir? Good. When you're worried about what's going to happen next or what to say next or how to handle that situation, there's your buffer. Don't be scared to ask questions and get out there with it. OK? All right. Chef Ramsay loans his manager to train me. Is this unbelievable? I only hope we perform with the faith he's given us, you know? Otherwise, that's the end of it. It's the big night, and this restaurant has been transformed in 24 hours from a steakhouse to a neighborhood grill. Even though Chef Ramsay has brought in a new chef. OK. Yeah, we chef. Feeling good. And his own manager. OK. Are we all set? PJ's fate still rests with Madeline and Joe. You know, it's a fantastic face and make him a nice smile. Just make sure we keep them talking and don't leave them kind of standing there staring at you. This is a huge night for PJ's because People are coming back here for the first time. They're going to sit down to hopefully a new Madeline and Joe. We need this launch to go well. Otherwise, you know, we'll have no choice. We'll have to close the door. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Welcome to PJ's. How are you guys doing? 
Yeah. Delighted yeah. to have you with us, okay? Enjoy your evening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thirty minutes into dinner service, a surprise guest from the past shows up. Hi, good evening. How are you? Welcome to PJ's. I know you. Do you? I do. When was the last visit to PJ's? Six months ago, I boycotted it. They never cooked the steak right. The service, terrible. If you have any problems, please ask for Madeline right away. Madeline. I was shocked that he's back for a surprise visit, and I hope that we won't disappoint him. Enjoy. Please. <laughs> this guy has a lot of negative feedback about the restaurant. Is this the young couple that just walked in, is it? Yes. Make sure Gordon and the chef know. Table 10, people might have eaten here before they were in your film, yeah. actually. So previous customers, they complained last time they were here, so watch that ticket, yeah? Yeah. Let's go. Hi, how are you? I probably might recommend the mixed grill. The grill does look kind of interesting. We're going to try the uh, mixed grill. Great. Thank you. All right, first order, stuffed mushrooms, house salad, house salad. Three of mixed grill. That's going to be the hit tonight, kids. So there are two different temperatures on one mixed grill. Yeah, Can I'm we... going to cut the steak in half and leave half of it in there a little bit longer. I love that flexibility. Music to my fucking ears. Thank you so much. You're welcome. How are we doing, guys? Very good. How's that stew? Good. You guys have to get this next time. We'll come back with this. This is awesome. With the kitchen functioning in a cohesive and professional manner. Isn't that good? Oh, that's good. Madeline, you won. Madeline is about to get her first of many lessons in proper management. Madeline. <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? It's ridiculous. Cut it out. Please don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. That's it. That's your last break. I didn't get the break. I never left. OK, go chase your waiters. Let's find out. Come on. And it was following me everywhere. So we need to go find out the kitchen, what we have, what we don't have. There's no one there. Let's get back in. Let's check on this table four. I didn't realize how many places you had to be. OK, where are we going now with that? Uh... get a bus break. How was everything, guys? That was fine. Very good. Dinner service is off to a strong start. I'm going to find out what's happening with table 10. But the former customers, whose opinion signifies whether PJ's has really changed. Did you eat anything yet? Has yet to be served. You haven't been fed yet. I'll be right back. Before this critical customer walks out the door, Madeline must get her kitchen under control. Table 10, you haven't been fed yet. Dick, that actually went to table 9. Fucking hell. Who's sending food to the wrong tables, guys? Take care of it. Thank you, man. Oh, fuck right now. Oh, Jesus Christ, the mic. Table 10. We're just a little behind right now. OK, chef, they're starving. So they need something, and they need it now. Thank you, Mark. Let's go. Please take a breath. Take the pressure off. Don't worry. Working hard. Give me two minutes. You OK? Beautiful, baby. Flank steak, a slider, grilled chicken. Woo, that's beautiful. Yes. Come here, pick up. Mixed grill window. Let's not take this to the wrong table a second time, please. Really well handled with them. Really well handled in the kitchen. Thank you. Here we are. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, how are you? How's everything? It's really good now. I think it's going to be great. Thank you. They're happy with the new menu. They're happy with the food. He said he was definitely coming back. Oh, it makes me feel so good. So good. So please enjoy your dinner. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Everyone loves everything, man. Hey, you know what? It's all for you, Joe. <laughs> You're a different person when you have confidence in your chef. Everybody is rocking and rolling. Nice job across the board. I was actually very proud to be uh, owner of PJ's Grill. Chef Ramsay's vision of PJ's Grill was realized. How'd you feel? Great. It was a team effort that was led by the new chef, Madeline, and Joe. Tonight, PJ's Grill served 90 customers who love the food and, more importantly, are coming back because they've had a great time. The difference just with a decent chef in the kitchen doing his job that he's paid to do, what a weight off your shoulders. But the most important thing is I saw two owners who were passionate, happy, and dealing with their business. What Chef Ramsay's done here is incredible. I don't really know how he knew how to go to the heart of Joe, but he did. It's just been unreal. It's like I just got a, a fire back, you know? I haven't felt that way in a long time. This is the first time 
and a lot of years, I feel my brother's looking down on me, you know? Look over my shoulder. You can do it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night. During my stay here, it's been dark, rainy, and gloomy. And I'm not just talking about the weather. But based on what I saw tonight in this restaurant, I seriously hope that tomorrow the sun shines on PJ's Grill and into the future, because it deserves it. After Chef Ramsay left, PJ's business did improve. But after a great deal of thought, Joe and Madeline made the most difficult business decision of their life. They decided to close PJ's Grill and return to the construction business. Miami, Florida, known for its beautiful people, sandy beaches, and Latin-inspired culture. An ideal place for a Danish restaurant? What is traditional Danish food? Yeah, a lot of people don't understand that. Andy and his wife, Suzanne, purchased the successful restaurant, Fleming, a taste of Denmark, eight years ago. We knew it was a good restaurant. We knew it was very popular. And the whole idea for us was to try and keep it as much the same as possible so there would be little change other than someone else greeting them at the front door. Hi, welcome to Fleming. How are you? We were worried about the fact that it said Fleming, a taste of Denmark. Neither one of us know much about Scandinavian food. It doesn't have celery in it, does it? We struggled to try and find a chef to come in. Very knowledgeable. In Danish cuisine, we finally found something we like. A classically trained chef. But it's Danish food today, huh? I'm from Cuba. In the menu right now, it's not 100% my cuisine. Give me flavor on the food. Flavor. I prefer something like when you, right away you eat your food, you, you feel it. What is that? Bam! Oh, you're gonna have to start learning how to speak Danish. I have this chef who's got lots of ideas. You know, let's change this, let's change that. But I've been very reluctant because I, you know, I don't want to alienate our regular loyal customers. Follow me, ladies. Yes. Our clientele that comes to the restaurant are old people. All the servers they read the obituaries to see if our customers are listed on there. After a while, it's pretty sad when you see them sort of knocking down like dominoes. So I haven't been here for a while because of health situations. Oh, well, I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah. And it's just sad to know these are the only people that we've served to. Keeps going like it's been going. This is what we got. 15 years ago, you couldn't get in here on a Friday or Saturday night because it was booked. Now we don't even have reservations to fill our Friday and Saturday night. I think we have to change something. We'll talk about it later. Andy has been afraid to make changes, and why, you know, when I tell Andy, well, I want to do this and I want to do that, and he says, that's not going to fly. But you can't worry just about what the old farts think that come into your restaurant. You got to get in the younger people and the middle-aged people that are going to be your clients for the next 10 years. It's a 31 dinner. The huge amount of debt that we're under right now, it, it puts a strain on the restaurant, it puts a strain on the relationship I have with, with employees, it, it puts a strain on my relationship at home with Suzanne. This business sucks. I know. We can't have many more Saturday nights like this, or we're not going to stay in business. Our restaurant and our home mortgage are tied into one loan. I'm concerned about losing our house. This has been one of the most stressful years of my life. We're at a point where we need this restaurant to be successful soon, or, or we're going to be in, in big trouble. People immigrate to America to chase the great American dream. They come from Sicily to open the most amazing Italian restaurants, from Shanghai to open their Chinese restaurants. This is the first time I've ever been to a Danish restaurant. Can't wait to meet the Danish immigrants. Thank goodness I brought my dictionary. See you. Welcome to Fleming. Gordon, please. And your first name is? Suzanne. Suzanne. And? I'm Andy. Andy, good to see you. You're the owners? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Vorden er du? I'm sorry. <laughs> no Danish here. <laughs> but it's a Danish restaurant. The Danes have left the building. So, the chef's Danish? No. No, he's Chef Cuban. is Cuban. 
Cuban. And the name Fleming's, what it means? Fleming is, was the original owner of the restaurant. It's and Danish. He is Danish. So I'm trying to get my head around this. Danish name. What's Danish in the restaurant? There's still some influence in oh. the food. And we kept everything almost identical. Ooh, what's going on with the color? Somebody colorblind? Uh, yes. Yeah, actually, I am. Good. You are? Yeah. Well, you look very well coordinated in terms of dress sense. I get a lot of help. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, where should I sit? I'll take you in. What are they there? Those are our desserts, and we put them out every day. Why would you put them out before the customer orders them? So they can choose. So you finish your entree, and then you parade up here to the gallery. Uh-huh. <laughs> This is antiquated, this idea. This Seriously? was the way Fleming did it. It's been kept this way. Seriously? Does that look appetizing? Adjacent to the bathroom door? They all have to walk by it at some point during the evening. Trust me, if I was on my way to the bathroom and I had to bypass that, I'd be discouraged to come back and order dessert. I better sit down. Aye, aye, aye. Dessert museum. Maybe when he tastes them, things will be better. Good evening, how are you? Good afternoon, how are you? I'm fine. I'm Julie. I'll be your servant. Excellent. This is the crudite we serve with every meal. Well, I'm the crudite since uh, <laughs> my granddad's 80th birthday. So old-fashioned. And how long have you been here? I've been here 15 years. So you were with the old owners? Yes, I was. Wow. What's changed here in 15 years? The staff. Wow. My God. <laughs> and did the original restaurant Fleming have pink? Honestly, pink flowers, pink napkins, pink walls. It's pink everywhere. Yeah. Oh, good grief. The pink walls and the little blue plates, to me, it's almost antique. It's like walking into Grandma's house. Or say goodbye to Grandma. <laughs> I think I'm ready, actually. Let's start off with the uh, Gravelax. OK. Got to see that. Fricadella. Certainly. Entree. I'll go for the Grandfather Duck and Danoise. OK. Excellent. Thank you, Lion. One grab black, one freak appetizer. You tell me what you know really about the food from Denmark? I don't know too much. For me, it's not very excited. I prefer something like it. when you put your food in your mouth, you have pot in your mouth. Here's your grab blocks. Wow. Take me around the plates. Um, it's just some garnish, and then you have the uh, grab blocks. Thank you, Lion. Wow. It tastes like flypaper. Oh, Jesus. There's a nice fly on the side of my plate as well. What a shame. That tasted very strange. Way overdone. And unfortunately, the fly, he's dead now, anyway. OK. Mm. Oh, my god. He absolutely hated this, and there was a bug on there. Garbage. <sighs> One free appetizer. And this is our homemade fricadellas. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Frick Adela. Jesus. It's just soft and mushy. Does the chef ever season food? Everything's just got this air of blandness. It's just like mush and just some disintegrates. That's our customers. <laughs> Unbelievable. They must be a lot easier on the dentures. Yes. <laughs> Dave, how's everything so far? Dreadful. This is special for you. There's a swan just appeared on that lady's table over there. What is that? Cindy does that. What is that for, Cindy? Oh, uh, she has a tiramisu in it. Can I just have a little look at that? I mean, look. This is from the old day. Oh, my goodness me. That is extraordinary, though. I'm going to order dessert just to get the swan. <laughs> huh? How cool is that? Enjoy. It's amazing. It reminds me of my sixth birthday party with my family. You must show me how to do that. OK. Oh, yes. I like to make my swans and take them to the people and see their reaction. <laughs> just take a big piece of foil, just fold it over. Uh -huh. enough room to have a nice big tail. We love a big tail. <laughs> More elegant, yes. like you, glamorous. Oh, bless you. Twist it around. I love it. Make him a pretty little head. Just about it. Wow. Oh, and the kids love it. Ta-da! 
<laughs> this is special for you, here. Thank you very much. My children will love it. Thank you very much. Same trip. Thank you. Excellent. And you just made that day. Look, if this doesn't work out, I'll certainly go to work for <laughs> Chef Ramsay. I'll make all the swans. This is the Dutch. Right. My goodness me. When was that cooked? Just now. Really? It looks like it was roasted a couple of days ago. Thank you. Well, not even moist. <sighs> Jesus, just when you think it couldn't get any worse. I don't think that Grandpappy wanted duck cooked like that. That's definitely one fuck duck. Right now, I didn't even think a swan would cheer me up. Oh, God. He didn't like it. Oh. Wow, 1992. Tell the chef I surrender. <laughs> no more, please. <laughs> God bless Denmark. That's <laughs> Denmark. We're done. Son of a bitch. What a disaster. Where's the chef? That way. Straight behind the line. Hello. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. And you're the head chef here? Yes, sir. Why is everything so bland? That's some of the worst food I've ever eaten. The Gravelax, why is it so tough? I don't have an answer for that. It's like eating a leather belt. Fricadella, mushy. The duck was dry, overcooked. That was shocking. Honestly, the food is so outdated. Why'd you let him cook that food? Because we haven't tried to change the menu. We've won, we just haven't tried to change anything. Just been afraid to change. My God. You're nostalgic with something that's not worked for a long time. You are at the end of the line. How are you? Word of Chef Ramsay's arrival has filled the restaurant with customers for the first time in five years. And so tonight, the entire Fleming staff, owners, waiters, and cooks, will be tested. Follow me, please. I am disappointed at some of the things that happened today. How's everything going out here? Good. I just need to start sitting in this room now. OK. But there's nowhere to go but up now. And I trust Andy 100%. And I hope to God I'm right. <laughs> because if I'm not, we're shit out of luck. My name is Julie. I'll be your server this evening. Gentlemen, have you decided? I really don't know. Something Danish, obviously. The grandfather duck. I'm going to have the wiener system, please. Working in beer for wine. Danny Sheegan, I'm wiener. I need Cindy, please. Just 30 minutes into service, and a number of entrees have left the kitchen. Perfection. That's what you got. Dinner's ready. So clearly, speed is not a problem at Fleming. That's pretty awful. However, satisfying customers is. How is everything? This isn't so good. Pardon? This isn't so good. I'm not going to eat that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. What's wrong with that? We nursed it, so she said it was very bland. Let's put it this way, we won't be coming back. I couldn't even look at that and eat it. It's thick and bland. You bland too? Bland, yeah. It just doesn't taste very good. OK, I let him know. He hated this. OK, OK. What didn't he like about this? He just said he hated it. He said he can't eat it. Oh, Christ. I'll bring you the menu, ma'am, so you can choose something else, and I'll get you another pignoli salmon. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Andy. Oh, no, come on. This is mushy. Andy is absolutely afraid of change. He's tried to keep the tradition, and I think it's time to move on. Son of a bitch. Oh, come on. I need some extra salt so the fish is to dry. What a disaster. Come on. No way, no way. Oh, jeez. It's a non-stop parade of food being returned to the kitchen. You know that? Yes. Almost everything coming back was bland, doesn't taste well, doesn't taste good. What's going on with this? It was very bland, no flavor. Three items. Oh, fuck. Those
those dishes are all Danish style. Items that have been there for 25 years. Can I get you something else to eat? You're just eating bread. That's not going to help. Chicken was totally bland. I don't see how anything can get worse at this point. While Andy tries to pacify unhappy diners, I can make something like uh, coconut shrimp very quickly, crab cakes. Chef Ramsay has seen enough of the kitchen in action. He's heard the complaints about the food and knows that many of the problems are not caused by cooking alone. Holy mackerel. Ay, 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 ay. But by what is lurking in the storage unit. What the fuck? Oh, mashed potatoes, piping hot. Unbelievable. Andy, Suzanne, come in here. Oh, God. Orlando, I know you're busy there, big boy. I just need you for 30 seconds, please. Yeah, I'll be quick. Come with me. So this is for raw meats, yes? And here we've got some... What the fuck is that? Oh, my God. No, come on. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. There was one duck on a tray with meat that was thawing, and the duck was in the meat juice. Cooked duck and defrosting meat. Look at it there, so who put the ducks there then? Ah, oh, fuck. We've been selling duck. Stop the kitchen, everybody! I need all the ducks off the table and stop them eating it. Probably. They have discontinued the ducks? No, just for the seasoning, <laughs> no, no duck. Like table 61 had duck. Is that the duck? I'm so sorry. I'll explain in two seconds. Do excuse me. It was embarrassing to have Chef Ramsay literally take the duck from in front of the gentleman and okay. tell everybody no duck. Have you served anybody duck? I've served about eight. Stop! We're not serving another fucking duck out of there! We just contaminated the whole fucking place! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Raw meat now and cooked meat. No, come on. A frightening discovery in the storage unit. Stop! We're not serving another fucking duck out of there. We just contaminated the whole place. Has clearly shown Chef Ramsay just how far this once legendary restaurant has fallen. Now I am seriously, seriously worried. We're fucked. Yeah, you're right. You're fucked. If I was a health inspector now, what would you do? You would take that product and probably throw it out. Throw it out. You would continue serving one more plate of food. What do you think we're going to do? Continue cooking? I don't believe that the food that's out here now is contaminated in any way. I never have seen that before. If I did, I would have a fit. But I was surprised that Andy wasn't aware of that. I think he's had his head buried in the sand for the last seven years. You cook one more thing, I'm fucking out of it. There are blinders at times. When things get tough, I put them on, and I just forge ahead, and you miss some things, and you miss some of those. Chef Ramsay is frustrated by Andy's laid-back attitude, so he decides to try and get some answers from Andy's wife, Suzanne. I don't know where to start. OK. I don't know what to tell you. I, all I can say is I'm sorry. Trying to work with an owner that's in denial is 10 times harder. Why is he so blasé? I think he's probably in shock. I don't know. I'm not him, so I don't know what he's doing right now. <laughs> Suzanne, if your husband doesn't start realizing what he's doing wrong in a big way, I can't help him. I agree. I agree. I feel let down by Andy. This is a huge, huge wake-up call. And if this doesn't make any change, nothing will. I don't know where to start, Suzanne. What I do know is that right now, I don't feel too good about this one. exactly what Fleming's needs, a big dramatic change. So I'm going to hit the streets and find out what the locals really want from their Fleming's restaurant. Hello. How are you? Good to see you guys. Now, ladies, have you heard of Fleming's? Yeah. yeah. Of Nobody talks about it anymore. Nobody says, oh, I was at Fleming's. Let's go back and try it out. There's a new owner, and it went downhill. Have you heard of Fleming's restaurant? Actually, I have. What's the word on the street? Not so good food. My parents used to go there back in the day when it was good, but I didn't even know it was still open. Uh, I haven't heard any good reviews. It's old. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a place my mom and dad would probably love to go. And you're not going to go anywhere near the place again? Not until something's done. It's extraordinary. And this guy's at first to change. 
but you've got all those customers standing on your doorstep. Unbelievable. So sad. Chef Ramsay's grassroots research clearly points out how damaged this restaurant's reputation really is. Okay. Ironically, many of the people who work at Fleming realize they are in desperate need of change. But there is one person who doesn't agree with that. Unfortunately, it's the owner. Yesterday was a really bad day. I took the morning this morning, walked around the community, done my homework, and really confirmed this Danish restaurant is no longer talk of the town. So what I need from each and every one of you is to be incredibly honest. Let's talk about what's wrong with the restaurants. Orlando, tell Andy what this place needs. Uh, I believe we need to build in new menu, we need to build in new food, something more attractive, something more contemporary, you know? That's my opinion right now. Crystal, tell Andy why the restaurant's not working. You're scared you're gonna fail. So instead of taking the jump and the leap of actually doing what you want to do, you're scared that no one's going to like it, and you're going to lose everything. But the truth of the matter is, Andy, either way, you're going to lose it if you don't do something. Suzanne, you and I spent time talking last night. You were pissed off. Tell your husband what he needs to do to get this place back on track. In my opinion, I think a lot of people are afraid of change and they don't change until they're brought down to their knees because they're terrified because it's easier to stay with what they know than to risk change. And I think that has been Andy's fault. Do you understand what she's saying? Yeah, I, I, her points are valid. My, How do you respond to it? How? My, my response to it now is I'm just afraid to alienate the people that we had and lose what we have. The only thing right now that's going to save your business is a dramatic change. It, it's a long time coming, and it's, it's time to do it. Andy needs to take ownership of the restaurant. And I think Andy will buck up now and take charge. Get ready for a dramatic change. Chef Ramsay knows that the changes to Fleming cannot be subtle. And the most drastic change needs to be the food. So step one of his plan is to take the restrictions off the kitchen and let them cook. I want to spend the next 20 minutes looking at the ingredients, what we've got, and just cooking something. And when you start, forget anything to do with Danish. People don't go out in South Florida to dine Danish. Let's get that right, yeah? Good. Think popular, think trend, and think where we are. OK. Let's do some cooking. Four of us together, yes? I want to see a little bit of flair. Oh, yeah, baby. That's going to be awesome, something different. Yeah. That's like we're looking for. That's like we're ready for that. As soon as beautiful. Is it? Mouth in your mouth. Let's go. Ready? With the shackles taken off, the kitchen have come up with a number of exciting <laughs> non-Danish menu items. That's definitely not our menu. Chef Ramsay has added a sear tuna. Now, to make sure everyone is on the same page, he shares these new dishes with the front of the house staff. Scrumptious. Right. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Nothing Danish there. Taste the chips. They'll be seasoned with a little bit of cayenne pepper, it's black beautiful. beans, mm -hmm. pineapple salsa. Yeah. This is so good. Yeah. And I love this. Seeing those dishes and tasting them, it's a better reflection of what Miami is. And I think it'll draw in a big crowd. Very nice. <laughs> yes. Very nice. I think change is difficult for everybody. What we've been doing for the same 25 years is not working anymore. We're going to get this restaurant on track. With Chef Ramsay's newfound belief in the kitchen staff and Andy, Gordon and his team worked through the night to pull off one of the most ambitious makeovers yet. Good morning. Good morning. Come through, please. All right. Today is about dramatic changes. Andy and Suzanne, are you ready? Absolutely. Yeah, yes. Good. Let's go. It's time to enter the new Fleming. And more importantly, time to start a new profitable chapter. Oh, shit. Come in. Oh, please. my God. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Holy cow. Can you believe this? Oh, my God. This is magic. We've got rid of that pink that scares and spooks customers away. 
It was dated and uninviting. Now it's warm, it's elegant. It brings in a new modern era. I am so excited for Annie and Suzanne. It's the direction that we've been wanting to go. And now we can take those baby steps to do that because we can't go back to being the old Flemings. This color is gorgeous. Andy, what color is it? I'm not sure. <laughs> You're not sure? OK, but it looks great. <laughs> it's a Tudor brown. We've got some new art on the walls. And look at the lights. They make the brown stand out. And have a look at this. Oh, look at that. Oh, I, I can talk. This is no longer Johansson Fleming's restaurant. A wonderful new theme, Birds of Flight, taking off into new chapters, <laughs> a new beginning. I love it. I'm extremely happy. Yes. It's gorgeous. <laughs> to see Andy and Suzanne crying for happy. It, it, we haven't seen that in a long time. Nothing but grim faces, nothing but despair. And this is not despair. This is awesome. I want to just bust. Amazing. I don't cry very often. Uh, I can't tell you the last time. But this did it. This is uh, everything for us. It gives us new hope. You OK? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm crazy. I'm happy for you. Hey. I'm so happy for you. I'm blue. Just... <laughs> to see my husband cry with happiness, to me, that was the biggest gift of all. I've never seen him so happy. It's been a huge wake-up call for him. Now we have a Russian to be proud of to take us right in to the 21st century. Andy, embrace it. Really convict it. Make it yours. It will happen. With the change in decor now complete, Chef Ramsay's next step in turning around the business is to market the restaurant to a younger clientele. So he reaches out to two local designers and puts together a swimsuit fashion show. Oh, wow. wow. The fashion show was fabulous. I was amazed. It's good to see younger faces that we want to attract to the restaurant. People are very excited. Our phones will probably be ringing off the hook. Although the main objective of the fashion show was to spread the word about the new Fleming, Chef Ramsay had a secret mission that he wanted to reveal. Weren't they amazing? Yes, yeah, absolutely. For the grand finale, please welcome our male model. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Andy, the owner of Fleming's Restaurant. I was in shock because I didn't really quite recognize him. It was more than a breath of fresh air. There's a whole hurricane. Suzanne. Yeah. Ten years younger. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You look great, honey. The clothes were amazing. The haircut was amazing. Most importantly, he was smiling. How can you not be motivated? Give it up, buddy. Well done. Yes? You look great. You feel good. I'm ready to go. You got to come see this new restaurant. It is unbelievable. <laughs> It's hours before relaunch, and with the dining room makeover and owner makeover now complete... OK, Ryland, let's go, buddy. Chef Ramsay is ready to unveil the new Fleming menu. Gone are the Danish gravel axe, the fricadelle, and the grandfather duck. And in its place, a modern contemporary menu, ideally suited for South Miami. Right, start off with the crab cakes. Yeah, a modern twist, the rock shrimp uh, lettuce cups. Pan seared group of fillets, seasoned with chorizo, so it's a little bit spicy, playing on the Cuban influence because the chef is Cuban, and more importantly, nice contrast, yeah? They look more contemporary, definitely more like a, this century, you know? Before we're not in this century, we go back to the 80s, you know? Look at the portion size. What I want to see tonight, more than anything, is <clears throat> empty plates, because when desserts come, we're going to do this. Very, very simple. Oh, yeah. yeah. To the table. Now, yes, yes. It looks so inviting. It's modern, contemporary, and it's just an immaculate way of serving a dessert. We don't stand and hold on to nostalgia. We move on. Andy, how does it look? It looks fabulous, Chef. Uh -huh. Now, there's no excuse. Have a little taste. Sure. Yes. We're opening in just under an hour, guys, yeah? Mm. Oh, that is good. That is whew, out of this world. The menu is fantastic. The food tasted out great. Everything looks wonderful. Unbelievable. Mm. I didn't see any Danish food anywhere. Fleming has gone through some major changes in the last 72 hours. It appears as though the biggest change may have been the owner, Andy. OK, 74, 75, 77, 78. No 76, OK? Who has a newfound energy and is operating like the leader he once was. Let's go. We've got to roll. Chef Ramsay definitely put a fire under Andy. You should have everything out there. He was sent down special. 
from heaven. I, I know he is. Tonight, relaunch night. Yes, it's going to be difficult, but stick together. We're not throwing food out. We're caring, seasoning in, and hitting perfection, OK? Yes, sir. Let's go. I'm feeling nervous, excited, tense, everything. Everything all at once. Crystal, Dequan Cook from the Miami Heat. Yep. He's coming for dinner, OK? okay. So look after him, yeah? Hi, welcome to Fleming's. The fashion show clearly has spread the word about Fleming. This is our new menu. I like the look. It's very clean and it's refreshing. I'm very excited. Enjoy dinner. Thanks. The restaurant is fully booked. My name's Crystal. Good You're one. I know who you are. Okay, it's nice to meet you. Are you ready to order? Yeah, I'm going to get it like a house salad. Can I try the wood salad? Oh, I'm going to have the pan seared mahi mahi. Yes, ma'am. The pesto shrimp liquid, please. Oh, I'm going to bring you the sushi salad right okay. now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. First table, yes? Two small Caesar salads. Snap on it, big boy. As part of the new menu, all of the entrees come with either a house salad, a wedge salad, or a Caesar salad. Fifteen minutes into service, and the salads are leaving the kitchen. Carrots, right to me. Rich, you gotta be quick with those Caesar Is salads. Is our Caesars coming with croutons, or are they coming with vegetables? Vegetables? He's making Caesars with vegetables. He's what? That's what I'm asking. I'm trying to say that's not a Caesar. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Is there carrots in your Caesar salad? I would think so. Yeah. Uh, would you excuse me? Would you mind if I just get a chance to do them again? I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm my apologies. Hey, guys. Orlando, just two seconds. You, stop. Just look at me. We're not serving Caesar salad with bits of carrot in there. The Caesar salad hasn't changed. Come on, guys. Radish, Caesar salad. The only thing's missing is the fucking flies. Nerves are high. And there's a lot of confusion back there. A lot of confusion in the salad area today. You have to watch what he's doing. Lucky. It's very complicated salad. You know? Complicated? What? My grand could do better. This is dead. Oh, my god. We can't even get out of the traps properly. The cold food is backing up the kitchen, and this, right now, doesn't look good. Fucking hell. It's 40 minutes into service, and not one proper salad has left the kitchen. Miles, can you help, please, yes? And not surprisingly, customers' patience is wearing thin. There's lettuce and some crouton. You just take a bag of rummy The kitchen's totally backed up. I can't even get a Caesar salad. Caesar salad is the simplest things to do. You just put a little lettuce in, little, you know, it's like, God. Unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. I asked for five Caesar salads like half an hour ago. Where the fuck are they? Do I have to make it myself? I make it myself, yeah? Oh. Uh, a Caesar fucking salad. We're dying over here. Come on. Hallelujah. I got my Caesars. OK, here is the Caesar salad. The kitchen has recovered from the salad dilemma. Beautiful. Let's get these going. And an hour into service, entrees are making their way to the dining room. And relaunch looks to be back on track. Oh, my god. It's not working. But the old equipment at the restaurant has brought the kitchen to a standstill. Where am I trying to play? No, no, no. Try to put it on the uh, pilot. Guys, come on! Unfucking believable. If we don't have the right equipment with that kind of business, at the same time, we can't respond. G give it to me. Give it to me. All right. How can you work with a range that half of it doesn't work? Unbelievable. They can't get a fucking meal out of here. Let's go! Shit. Oh. This relaunch, we have to make it work. We don't have time to, to have another bad night, but we don't have what we need back there to, to really pull this off 100%. While Chef Ramsay goes to the dining room to see how customers are doing, the chefs continue to tinker with faulty equipment, unaware that they are about to cause a much bigger problem. Something's burning. Papi, I smell something burning. Where, where do you smell that? You smell it? Something is burning. Something is burning over here. What is burning? Bread burning? No, it's more than bread. Something else is burning. Something is burning. I smell something burning. Something is burning. Water, 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 water. No, no, no. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Clear away. Clear away. Let's go. Moving, guys. Move the pan. Move the pan. All right, all right, all right, all right. Andy. Move it, move it, move it. Holy shit. Within minutes of Chef Ramsay leaving the kitchen to check on the dining room. Something is burning over here. A stovetop fire has erupted, putting the relaunch and the restaurant in danger. Water, 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 water. No, no, no. Watch out, 
watch out, watch out. As the smell of smoke enters the dining room... Watch out, please, guys, watch out. Chef Ramsay returns to the kitchen and takes charge. If it hits the pilot lights and backfires, it's going to blow on his legs or blow on his face. Underneath, it's underneath. Watch out, watch out. Get out. Watch out, guys, please. Clear away, clear away. I mean, when was the last time that was clean? Chef Ramsey, we've got fire out. Now we're trying to get reorganized and back on track. I need one plan. Medium rare, one revive, medium rare. Come on, guys. Pull together. Let's go. Despite being down to only six burners in the kitchen. Finally an order out. OK. Andy and Orlando have led a comeback. This is you, veal chop, lamb chop. That's it. And Fleming has rebounded from the fire. Roasted chicken. This is outstanding. It's delicious. I like that. You don't like this one. People were extremely responsive to the new menu. They loved the items. They were socializing and, and having a good time. It was more noise than I've heard in this restaurant in 15 years. It's just refreshing to see it this way. Are you ready for dessert? The chocolate mousse. We want one of everything. <laughs> oh, very good. The dessert trolley was sensational. And everyone loved the desserts. There's nothing left behind. Nothing to box, no swans. Cheers to you. Thanks, thank you. Cheers to you, success of your new restaurant. Hope you're the best, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Have a good night. OK, uh, guys, come over, please. It was a tough night. It was a successful night. But the oven slowed up service. So it's going to be very difficult to produce this new menu, or any menu for that matter, with the equipment we have. Yeah, what a night. What a significant difference. Wasn't there a new energy in the dining room tonight? A sort of vibe yeah. of, yeah? People were alive. Yeah, we energized. Any one of you could have thrown in the towel and given up. And you held your own. And I, I, I believed in the passion and the fight and the determination to make this restaurant work. Thank you, sir. That was the good news. But there's a big problem here, yeah? This problem will prevent Fleming from being a success. I need you to follow me, all of you, please. I was scared and I wanted to get away because I had no idea what was going to happen. Let's hurry up, please. Come out. Let's hurry up. Stand over there, please. Oh, dear. Tonight, I was forced to make an emergency call. And this is a result of that call. There we are. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> a state of the art, brand new, tailor made Vulcan kitchen. When that tarp came off, I just felt this whole sense of relief. This was amazing. This was the missing link. <laughs> Oh, my God. What the hell? That's one of the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. That's too much. Wow. That's for us? Come on. We're starting off with a unique six-ring burner, a convection oven. Phenomenal. Followed by a six-burner diamond-cut char grill. And then finally, the most amazing fryer. I'm very fucking happy. <laughs> it's been installed tonight. Now, you have no excuse. Wow. No excuse. Andy and Suzanne, you have everything you need inside that restaurant now. Low staff, great decor, great chef, great menu, and a new kitchen. Now, take it and run with it. Thank you so much. I, um, I'm just, I can't express myself well. Thank you. Thank you so much. I never in my wildest dreams imagined we would be given so much. Well done, my darling. Thank you very much. You're great. Well done. There's absolutely hope for Flemings. We are going to make Ramsey proud, and we're going to do it for ourselves, too. Well done for tonight. Thank you. <laughs> really well done. Thank you. Yes? Yes, yes. <laughs> Rest on tour, because that's what you showed. Thank you. Now do it. I will. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Make it work. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Good night. Chef Ramsey did a lot of what was necessary to get this restaurant on track. He really found the right idea and the right design. I, I think it's going to save us. I think it's going to turn us around. Wow, what a week. 
Out of all the kitchen nightmares I've ever done, this has to be the biggest transformation ever. We completely changed the decor, completely changed the menu, but the biggest change of all was in the owner, Andy. Now he can make his own history as opposed to buying somebody else's. My goodness. Caesar salad with carrots. Unreal. Group hug, group hug, group hug, group hug. Hi, hi, hi. After Chef Ramsay left, Andy and his loyal staff embraced the changes that Gordon put in place. Wow, ready to use. And with a brand new kitchen Ooh. and a new lease on life. Oh, yeah, that's the sound like they're looking for. Fleming has once again become the place to eat like it was 20 years ago. I can run a restaurant. I just needed the fire back. Your menu looks beautiful, man. Fleming's is going to be around for at least another 20 years. Hi, welcome to Fleming's. Have a seat. We'll be right there. I think we're going to be on the right track.